but I just want to smell the fresh air again. No, Roderick, the upworld has nothing left for us except pain and sunburn. Now I'm sure that once everyone saw how many layers the game has beneath the surface, everybody wondered, could I build my entire base underground? Would this be useful? Could it be practical? Would it even be possible? Let's talk about this. Check the timestamps if you want to jump to our particular point in the video. I am going to show off how I constructed everything that I show off here at the end. The first thing in favor of the underground base is the aesthetics. You have to agree that a reveal like this is amazingly dramatic. Now, is it a little cheap that I am saying that the aesthetics is my very first pro? Maybe it is, but I am pretty happy with how this ended up looking and I'm very satisfied with what I was able to create. It is fully possible to create an entire base underground. A few knocks against the aesthetics is that the camera work around here gets very jumpy and so if you're trying to focus in on exactly what you want it's not going to transition smoothly and you also get some crazy stuff happening here like these trees that I have growing down here are able to clip through the ceiling and actually all the way up to appear as bushes above the surface which I think is absolutely hilarious <laughs> that they're able to extend that far through the earth but you do get some weird things and then also as you are trying to work with stuff above the surface here you have have the ability to still select items beneath the ground and so you kind of have to keep on moving your camera around to the right angle so that you're not ultimately selecting something on a completely different level than what you want to be interacting with. One of the biggest advantages of having an underground castle comes in when your colony is under attack. Having a protective ceiling over your base made out of the earth is brilliant because these units of earth do not have a hit point bar until you set them to be mined. So trebuchets will not be able to break in and do any damage to your precious structures. Now here for me, because I have set up this Abbey of the Deep over top of my stairway, I am gonna have to do repairs here if they bring trebuchets against my structure here, but you can just as easily set up a staircase capper that is just a small block building with a Lot of the limestone block walls and that's going to take basically no damage if the enemies fire all their trebuchets against you. You can just wait out their barrage until they get tired of throwing rocks at you or potentially lure their guys in by setting some of your villagers outside of the protective gates and then that should bring the enemies in to attack you if they can target a specific one of your characters. If the mass of rotting bodies outside of your base does not dissuade the attackers then they are pressed down into the catacombs for whatever horrors you want to cook up for them. Now the church here might not look like much, but as we go a layer deeper, it is very easy as long as you are intelligent and in how you set up your stairs to still be able to have space for plenty of traps to waylay your attackers. You are also naturally going to be developing a structure where the enemies are drawn in to the center of fire from your archers that you can bring against them from multiple levels and behind heavy fortifications. Metal traps are extremely overpowered, being able to do a lot of damage and stunning enemies for a significant duration while your archer is just free fire against them. Because this is medieval England, everybody's white and that means nobody can jump. So there is no way the enemies are gonna be able to cross this four, five foot chasm that you have dug down and be able to get at you. So incredibly easy to just barricade yourselves in here and be able to just cut through the enemies, shooting fish in a barrel for your guys with crossbows over here. Now you are going to want to be careful that you don't have villagers continually running out of your base entrance to be able to get up and do any business that they have up here on the surface. There are a couple of answers that you can do with this, but they all end up being a little bit finicky. If you want to make sure that you keep your settlers within the protected space, you could choose to lock the doors leading out. And then if you need to mine resources or gather any other resources from the surface for whatever reason, you can dig mine shafts out from your base and then clear out areas to be able to gather in resources. You're just going to want to make sure that those mining areas do not actually connect to the surface. Locking and opening doors does take a settler set to be the steward, so there is going to be a little bit of delay in terms of when you lock them. So if you're wanting to lock them just for a raid, you're probably going to want to select specific villagers and tell them to prioritize locking those doors to make sure that everybody stays within the area where they are protected. Alternatively, you can just draft all of your guys and micromanage their different positions out on the walls, setting them all exactly where you need them to be. 
pro tip is that characters with spears have enough reach to be able to stab at enemies who get on the other side of the doors while they are trying to break through your grated door, they're going to get poked by your characters on the other side. All in all, this setup handles enemy raids extremely easily and I cannot wait to see when we are allowed to build our own instances of siege equipment, what kind of mayhem we can cause down here. Our next advantage is shelter from the biting winds. We will be able to survive here in our pit huddled around our coal burners from the winter blizzards to come. Sorry about that, got my British apocalyptic strategy survival simulators confused. But being here in the cavern, we are able to have so much more temperature control than if we had our structure built above ground. We can easily keep our rooms cool in the summer compared to the temperatures that they're experiencing outside, be able to survive those heat waves much more easily, also be able to easily keep things from rotting away in storage with the cooler temperatures as long as you have the sufficient insulation between your storage zones and your heated areas. And of course the opposite is true in winter that you are able to heat your cavern much more easily than if you had a structure built above ground and this is because because all of these earth walls and the ground here has an insulation coefficient of one. This means that no heat is escaping through that area, whereas all the other structures that you build are going to have an insulation factor that is below one, meaning that they do lose some heat. Some heat dissipates out into the room beyond. This means that honestly, you would be able to keep your settlers using summer or winter clothes, whichever one you chose to target as a temperature year round, and get to avoid the hassle of having to go through and switch out whatever apparel they're trying to use as the seasons change. Hopefully we get an update at some point where we can change the wardrobe preference of all of your settlers at once, but right now we still have to click through individually and that can be a pain. Unfortunately, pairing right along with this, a major con is controlling the temperature through these clay braziers, which are very micro intensive because they have to be manually sweat on or off for each brazier individually. And then as you have to wait for a settler who has been ascribed housekeeping duties to come through and actually be the one to turn them off. So you're always going to have this delay between when you are changing the braziers and when you get to actually see the result of them turning off. This means that if you are trying to find a target temperature for the room, you have to kind of play around. It becomes an extended process waiting for the villagers to actually get around to make the adjustment and then seeing if that was the adjustment that you needed, especially if you have multiple brazers in a room. Hopefully we get an update where we are able to select rooms and then set a temperature range that we want them at so that the brazers will automatically be turned off if it gets over a certain temperature and then will automatically be turned on if it gets underneath that target get temperature banned but right now we don't have that so you get to fiddle around with the brazers if you want to be able to exercise this full temperature control over your cavern. Putting in the effort to heat your cavern really is worth it though as we swing over to the crop terraces because these little guys are able to grow as long as they are planted in the earth regardless of if they are underneath a roof that would block out all sunlight. We found some kind of bizarre subterranean sustenance down here and as long as the temperature is within the growable range for the different plants you can have harvests year round. Being able to use your fields for that extra season means that you can actually keep smaller fields so it's faster for your villagers to plant and harvest and this kind of snowballs. You also don't have to worry about keeping up a large store of food for the winter because you'll be able to keep on bringing in new harvest throughout those harsh months. I know right now surviving with fields planted above ground is not that hard, but as villagers have to start dealing with grand objectives, taking care of animals, vassalizing other settlements and going on raids against those settlements, having social interactions with each other, and even fighting fire Fires, there's going to be a lot of different pulls on their time, so minimizing their time spent in the fields as much as possible is going to definitely be beneficial. Alright, now that we have harvested the carrots, it's time to pack them away and put them in the storehouse. And this brings us to the final con of trying to keep an entirely underground base. It is that your storage area is pretty limited and it gets very expensive to expand anywhere. I should say expensive and time consuming because instead of just having to lay out walls and supports, you are also going to have to mine out every single room that you plan on expanding to. Storage space is going to quickly become a premium and you are also going to be left with thousands and thousands of units of clay that you have to figure out how you're going to deal with. It's not like expanding storage space is a constant fight, but it is something that I wanted to bring up. So this style of castle sounds interesting to you, but you're not quite sure where to start building it on your own. I'm going to show off what worked out for me and then you guys can take it from there. 
Extending a room is a three-step process. First, you're going to paint out the spaces where you are going to build your beams to support the ceiling. The optimum layout to use here is dictated by the game's rules of stability and the wooden beams that are the all-important ingredient for keeping the roof from caving in on us. So, items have a stability of 4 if they are directly connected to the bedrock underneath them. As soon as the support underneath them is removed, they have one less than the stability of the object next to them, meaning that you have a support with a 4 and then connected to it is going to be a space with a 3 and this can extend down to stability 1 when something has stability zero, it will be destroyed. If we look at this space from the perspective of the ceiling, then this space is stability four, and then we go down to three, two, one, and then we work again from the other side of the wall, four, three, two, one, meeting here in the middle. So these two spaces have stability one, stability two, stability three. So we are able to keep a solid roof overhead with six spaces in between our pillars. Then the goal is to be able to have these beams spaced out as far as possible to have as much open space to work with underground here as possible. And these beams have a size limit of 10. So that is why we have dug out this area, 10 spaces deep and then six spaces across with these little pillars and going ahead and digging out the sections underneath where we can have these pillars. You could just as easily have these be solid walls if you wanted to, or if that is the style of room that you are going for. But I like having more open space and so then throwing in the beams is what I have found to work for me. The goal here is to clear out the space where we will be able to construct the beams and because everything else is still filled in we have no worries about a cave then happening above us. You do want to be very careful with this stage because any mistakes you make that are going to actually result in a cave-in are irreparable. You cannot, at this point in the game, reconstruct any type of earth tile. You're going to have to fill it in with something else later on. Now that's dug out, we lay down the beams that will be able to hold up our future rooms. Beams in place, we can mine away all of the filler material to clear out our rooms. Now that things are all cleared out, your villagers' mining skills should be significantly improved, and now we have a chance to furnish out our room. A couple things to keep in mind here is that when you are setting down the floor, all of the different floor types actually have different move speeds. So wicker and limestone are the slowest, wood is in the middle, and then limestone block floors are the fastest for your villagers to walk across by a significant margin. Also, these wooden beams supporting the ceiling somewhat restrict how you are going to lay out your rooms, but if you are going to have walls intersecting these areas, you don't have to worry about the beams breaking and causing a cave-in. So say we want to build a wall through here. We wanted to have a wall that would run all the way across. I'm just going to build one block here as an example. Once it gets built here, the wooden beam automatically readapts so that there are two smaller beams and there was a never a time where the ceiling was not supported. So you can have walls intersecting these beams as you carve out rooms in these larger areas as freely as you want. Now, if you want to do some refurbishing and tear this down, that is going to cause a bunch of other problems. You're going to want to have extra supports laid alongside to be able to hold up the roof without causing a cave-in, then destroy this, and then rebuild the solid beam. So that gets into a little bit of a headache, but at least when you are setting up your initial layout, you don't have to worry. Once you have that layout down, it is rinse and repeat for as large of a cavern as you so desire. I found it useful to carve out the entire top layer first. So this is at uh, layer four here is what I use for the visual and that will be mining down to what is considered layer three. You have five, which is ground floor. And then four is that first layer of basement if you were to just scoop off the surface dirt. And then everything underneath that is where you can build your castle with a full, uh, a full cavernous roof overhead. My full process here was to dig down, use the stairs to get to the lower level, and then once I reached this level, I could carve out this entire space that I wanted to, to pick out the size. I think I started a little bit shorter and then I extended it a little bit later, and I kept going down in the center with the stairs and then branching off as I wanted to cut down. So we have terraces for the fields, and then we go all the way down to the granite here for the castle because I kind of wanted to have multiple levels here with a great hall in the entrance. We cut to the kitchen in the back with a small stockpile here that is set to only food. They also have quick access to the larger stockpile in the back and quick access to the brewing stations over here. The brewing stations are not included in the same room because I believe that would take away from the kitchen bonus here to get our production speed as high up as possible. And because everybody in this game is alcoholics, I mean it is medieval century uh, England. <laughs> 
we have six brewing stations to be able to support 12 villagers. I think that is giving me a surplus right now. So I don't know the perfect ratio of brewing stations to settlers, but it is about one for every two settlers. In the quote-unquote outside courtyard are some of the other workstations over here for all the weaponry and then over here for other materials and smokehouses. You could enclose this to be able to get the workhouse bonus, but I liked the visuals so much of just being able to see things kind of open here and have this feel of spaces outside of the castle walls that this is what I went for, even though I am taking a small production speed penalty to do it. We've also fit in the shrines down here and a few villager beds. Now I did hit a very strange bug where in the shared bedroom over here, when settlers were sleeping in these beds, they would randomly get teleported above ground. Yes, from the bedrock to above ground, interrupting their sleep schedule, which was incredibly bizarre. Uh, so I removed this shared bedroom and now we have extra sleeping quarters here on the second floor. I have no idea what was causing this bug, what unique situation with putting beds on the bedrock or some other way that I had constructed this that was causing the settlers to get jumped into another area. Um, but moving them over here seemed to fix the problem, so I have not encountered it since. And then we have our wonderful library. I have researched everything up to this point, but I am expecting plenty of updates with new research to be coming, and I want to be ready to jump on that as soon as possible. I believe that is everything to do with my construction strategies on how I managed to build this all underground. If you have any questions about what I did or what I was doing to be able to get this construction, let me know in the comments. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, comment on if there is a way that I could potentially improve this style of base or if you have tried building an entire castle underground and subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. Thank you guys for watching and have a good one.